Hello and welcome to the webinar CIH exam equations visually explained and with examples. My name is Dr. Daniel Farkas and I'm a certified industrial hygienist, certified safety professional and a certified hazardous material manager. Today's presentation will go over the noise equations of the CIH exam equation sheet. If you have follow-up questions, please contact me at daniel at danielfarkas.com. I would like to thank Kent A. Candy, MS, CIH, CSP, ARM, CPCU for the peer review of this webinar. The noise section from the CIH Candidate Handbook has 20 equations referenced as useful equations for the ABIH examination. The ABIH is now known as the Board for Global EHS Credentialing. So let's look at the first equation. First, let's talk about how sound waves propagate. There are two types of sound waves, transverse and longitudinal. Transverse waves are a type of wave motion in which the particles of the medium move perpendicular or at right angles to the direction in which the wave itself is traveling. These waves have a characteristic up and down or side-to-side -side motion, as you can see on this slide. Longitudinal sound waves vibrate in the same direction as the sound propagation. Longitudinal waves are also called pressure waves because of the region of compression and rarefaction, as you can see in the animation on this slide. In this first equation, we calculate the sound pressure level in decibels. The commonly used reference or ambient sound pressure, P0, is 20 micropascals, and P is the sound pressure of the emitted sound in pascals. The sound pressure level or sound level measured is the effective sound pressure relative to the reference value, which is typically 20 micropascals. The sound pressure level is usually measured in decibels on the A scale. For example, how many pascals are required to produce a sound pressure level of 128 decibels? To solve this equation, we have to use the anti-logarithm or anti-log to get rid of the logarithm from the right side of the equation that contains the unknown p-value. And we do this by raising 10 at the power 6.4 and then solving for p, which value result is approximately 50.24 pascals. So now let's go to the second equation. In this equation, the sound intensity, also known as acoustic intensity, 
is a measure of the sound energy per unit area in a specific direction. It is a vector quantity with amplitude and direction to a reference value which is typically 10 to the power minus 12 watts per square meter. Do not confuse sound pressure level with sound intensity. Sound pressure level quantifies the loudness of the sound, while sound intensity provides information about the energy flow and the direction of the sound wave. For example, what is the acoustic intensity when the sound intensity is 20 watts per square meter? In this case, the sound intensity level equals 10 times logarithm, open parenthesis, 20 divided by 10 at the powers minus 12, close parenthesis, which equals 133 decibels, which is extremely loud and painful. Now let's go to the third equation. This equation states that the sound pressure level decreases over the distance logarithmically. The distance that the sound wave travels depends on the environment. Sound can travel through air, water, or other materials. Sound pressure level decreases with distance. As you can see in the animation, the sound pressure level at distance 1 is higher than the sound pressure level at distance 2. For example, if 100 decibels were measured at 10 feet distance from a noise source, how many decibels were measured at 50 feet distance? And how about a mile away? which is 5,280 feet. The answer is sound pressure level equals 100 plus 20 times logarithm 10 divided by 50 close parenthesis equal 86 decibels. And for one mile is approximately 46 decibels. Now let's go to the fourth and fifth equation. Equation number five, it's actually part of equation number four. This is the sound power level equation, which is a measure of total acoustic power radiated by a sound source in all directions. Sound power level is different from sound pressure level because sound pressure level measures the intensity at a specific point in space, but sound power level focuses on the total energy output of the source itself and is independent of the distance from the source or the acoustic environment. The reference or the base sound power, which is 10 at the power minus 12 watts, it's the lowest sound people with excellent hearing can hear. For example, estimate the sound power level of a siren that emits 30 watts. The sound power level equals 10 times logarithm 30 divided by 10 at the power minus 12 which equals approximately 135 decibels, which is extremely loud and painful if you are close to the source. Now let's go to, go to the equation number six. This is the time equivalent sound pressure level, which quantifies the average sound pressure level from a variety of sources over fluctuating durations. 
Time equivalent sound pressure level is often used in environmental noise assessments, workplace noise evaluations, and other applications where it is important to characterize the average or equivalent sound level experienced over a certain time period. As you can see in the animation, if you measure sound levels, in a busy work area for eight hours, then you can calculate the time equivalent sound pressure level based on all sources from machine and equipment. And you would get a single value that represent the equivalent sound level over that eight hours period. Time equivalent sound pressure level is used in situations where sound levels vary over time and help us understand variations in noise exposure. For example, determine the equivalent sound pressure level for the following sources, 85 decibels for 3 hours, 90 decibels for 2 hours, 92 decibels for 2 hours, and 82 decibels for 1 hour. In this case, to hurry up the calculations, we can divide the number of decibels by 10 and move the numbers of hours in front. So then we have 3 times 10 at the power 8.5 space plus 2 times 10 at power 9 plus 2 times 10 at the power 9.2 plus and we can put it directly 10 at the power 8.2 which gives us the answer. Now we have 10 times logarithm, open parenthesis again, 1 divided by 8, close parenthesis, and it's 8 because it's 8 hours total, times our answer, close parenthesis, approximately 88.95. So now let's go to equation number seven, 